Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to game number two of set two, which I guess you could call game seven. I'm not too sure how I'm going to name these videos once I eventually get down to uploading them. Yoda there trying to get the clone on the mineral patch right there. Um, by the way, guys, I guess I should talk about cloning because I did mention it in a previous video a long, long time ago. But what cloning essentially is, is when uh, players will uh, make sure that they stack two workers on the closest mineral patch. So you guys will see Yoda here do something a little cute where he's going to put the two mineral, uh, SCVs on every single close patch. And no doubt he's going to get two on this one as well. And the reason to do that is because it'll speed up your opening build order. Although some people will say, oh, there's a disadvantage because uh, your uh, <clears throat> your mineral patches that are closest to you will mine out first. But of course, the argument there is that at the end game, who cares about a couple extra monies? But uh, anyways, getting a little bit off on a tangent here. The uh, game seven or game two of set two, if you want to call it that, is coming up here. And it's time for uh, Mouse Sports to throw up a new player. And in fact, they have thrown up a Zerg by the name of Biggs. And his name here in this account is going to be Tosh. And this is a Swedish player who... Oh, there's a cheese barracks coming down! Oh, ho, ho, the drone sees it! Holy crap! How did how did Yoda see that? That's amazing! That is some seriously amazing awareness. Or maybe he just realized, hey, sometimes Terran players like to throw buildings in the middle of the map. Especially, I've noticed, Korean Terrans almost exclusively will on this map for whatever reason will always throw down a proxy barracks or a pro proxy factory or something in the middle of the map so maybe that's why a bigs went ahead and threw up his drone here and now he sees the barracks so this jig is up here in fact the scv building this might go down if a, a second scv doesn't come out and here comes yoda bringing out a second one but um a second drone is already there so i don't think no the bunker the barracks is uh halted in construction but another scv coming in and the two drones now pulling away oh no i don't think uh, biggs is gonna realize that that barracks is in fact going to finish um but it's okay because biggs did not go hatch first interesting on daybreak too this is a big big macro map usually zergs will go hatch first okay so uh a lot of things going on here in this game that are quite unusual but let's go ahead and go over the players here yoda with um a, a slightly worse win rate against zerg uh from his uh, terran versus protoss win rate but uh the big thing to note here is big has a very good win rate against terran in fact his best matchup is against terran i believe his uh, win rate is above 50 percent there and that's probably why mouse sports decided to throw up a zerg player here decided to throw up bigs because he's so good against terran and you will see this in this format of StarCraft 2, where teams are going to throw up the player they think has the best opportunity to take out the opponent. And so, here is uh, Biggs. <laughs> Biggs and Yoda, that's kind of interesting now that I think about it. I think Biggs was a character in Star Wars. Um, Biggs and Wedge, right? They were the friends of Luke Skywalker when they were trying to kill off the Death Star. I think Biggs died. A uh, little interesting thing to note there. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how this is going to go down. Uh, Biggs is from Sweden, I believe an Asian player living out in Sweden, and uh, of course Jun Wee, or uh, Yoda, a Korean. And let's see how this goes down. It looks like the gas is going to be stolen here, just the extractor kill trick, so that it can maintain the drone on building that extractor, and this really limits the amount of gas that Yoda's going to have. And uh, Yoda not going to be too concerned about that, because he's not going up to a quick starport or anything like that. But the Zerglings coming at the front door, luckily the supply depot wall was up. And we'll see if Yoda decides to go ahead and cancel the extractor again. Yes, he will. The barracks, by the way, guys, has decided to float back. There was really no way that uh, Yoda was going to get that any damage done out of that proxy barracks. It was scouted a long time ago. And uh, you know what? Biggs didn't go for a 15 hatch, which is typically why you would uh, build a proxy barracks in the middle of the map. So now things have kind of settled down a little bit. Um... There is a spine crawler coming up, so really going to settle down here uh, in terms of conservatism. Uh, I guess that eventually Biggs is going to lift off that spine crawler and then he's going to place it down here at the lower natural. But yes, things have certainly calmed down at this point in the Zerg vs. Terran. Remember, guys, second best of nine here, and the first team to five wins will claim that $6,000 prize. And uh, if you lose, well, you get the $3,000 prize, which is no small joke. That's still a lot of money. And uh, we'll just have to see how things play out here as the barracks is going to go ahead and take the tech lab and the factory will take the reactor and of course anytime you see a terran player doing this it's 100 percent going to be the biomech build that is so popular against zerg and the reason for that is because you if you do this early setup you can get early hellions out of the factory to control the map while you tech up this stim pack on the tech lab on the barracks and then you throw up additional barracks in the background and you get the bio units out 
and then you claim that natural. So uh, Yoda just going with a very standard bread and butter build after the uh, the little bit of a cheesy opening, I would say. But certainly things have calm down and here comes those four hellions for map control this lone zergling is going to get roasted the one at the tower also going down as well so like the brothers they all fall down <laughs> ashes ashes they all fall down and here comes the four hellions on their way over to the zerg natural where biggs has already got two queens and many crawlers here one crawler and a secondary one coming up also has a beanling nest in the background so i think he's going to be well protected from the hellions but that is not what yoda wants to do here he's just looking to deny creep tumors and he just killed off one of the tumors which i can tell you guys as a zerg player quite annoying because if you can limit the zerg creep spread and it's not very hard to do you can hold position hellions outside the creep line um, it, it really limits the Zerg's mobility, not only that, it limits their vision, and it really keeps the Zerg player antsy, and here we have Yoda running in with five or six Hellions, uh, that is five, that is six, and he's gonna get all the drones here, the drones are stuck, oh my god, the drones are stuck on the Queens, and 13 drones have gone down, the two crawlers are finally providing some line of defense here, but that was a big blunder by Biggs. Biggs actually ended up blocking his own drones with the queens that were holding position on the ramp. And usually, from a Zerg player, they're putting the queens on the ramp so that they can prevent Hellions from running inside the main, but you don't want to do that if your drones are not inside the main. Uh, so that was terrible for Biggs, who now is... Um only ahead of the Terran player by three SC, uh, three drones, and he's lost 15 this game already. So that was a terrible disaster for uh, for Biggs, and now Biggs is going to try to get some map control. So something, hopefully, will go his way in this game. But Yoda just uh, a super ballsy maneuver. You don't see Terran players doing that very often, where they just say, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to punch my Hellions in there and see what happens. Because it, it can honestly go very badly for Terran players. You have to remember, that's a big gamble. If they lose all those hellions and they don't get a lot of drones they have no map control they have no units on the field the zerg can essentially have their way with the terran if that happens but um you know what yoda took the gamble it paid off brilliantly and now he's making a timing push with combat shields and uh stim's already done by the way guys so this timing push actually is going to look to do some damage of course the baneling nest is done but there are no banelings on the field uh baneling speed is on the way but not quite done yet and neither is spire so if uh yoda wanted to make an attack here he could certainly do some damage the banelings force to cancel there great presence of awareness by yoda just realizing hey there's got to be banelings morphing somewhere and i can explore the map and kill off tumors as well and so he forces a kill off, uh, or he forces the cancel off on those banelings. The Zerglings trying to run over to the natural here, and they are going to be denied by a supply depot and an SCV that just finished construction. But uh, well done by Yoda, who uh, really is control of this game right now. He's got his Marines on the creep. I'm not too sure why he hasn't dropped a commsat yet. It's a pretty good idea, guys, to commsat the creep tumors and take them out for the reasons I stated before. Uh, it looks like these Zerglings just trying to get a bead as to what's going on at the front of the base. And does he have banelings? Yes, he does. He's got four banelings and a couple more coming as well. So he should be okay to this Marine harass. And now if he wants to, he could probably force his Marines to run away. Yes. And so the two medevacs going to go ahead and unload and pull out of there. And really, Yoda there, that timing push just, just there to push the front door, keep the Zerg on his back foot, kill off some tumors here or there, never really to commit to, to really end the game. That's usually not what a Terran wants to do, unless, of course, the Zerg doesn't have anything. Then, of course, he can end the game. But uh, that was a nice little timing push by Yoda, who now has tanks backing him up, and he's claiming the third. And what he really accomplished from that push as well, guys, if you think about it, is delaying the Zerg expansion. If you look at it right now, uh, Yoda has the third up and running already, whereas our Zerg player just got the third up. So things are not looking too good for our Zerg player. And here comes Biggs. Biggs coming in with the Zerglings and Banelings, but the Marine spread is brilliant. And really, most of the Marines staying alive there. That was an excellent Marine spread. And the tanks never died because they never went into combat. They're just chilling back at home. This is a tankless attack. And even without tank support, he may actually force the cancel on this hatchery. Wow. Uh... Uh, if you could not you could not ask for a better situation for a Terran player here now the medevac did go down But that's okay. These Marines They don't have a way to evacuate, but they could just walk back home I think by foot and really they they, they did quite a bit of damage to our Zerg player who now has a ton of banelings Holy crap. That's a lot of banelings. Uh, is he gonna try to do some kind of a bust at the front? I think now our Zerg player Biggs is 
has got one decision on his mind now. He's either got to attack or double expand. And I think the best thing for him to do here is go ahead and attack right into the third. And his Mutas are making their way over to the top left of Daybreak. Let's see if he tries to harass with the Mutas. There's already missile turrets there, though. And a bunker and a Viking. So... Uh, I don't see these Mutas doing much at all there. The volley of missiles coming out of the turret wall, that's going to delay those Mutalisks. And, oh, gosh, our Zerg player is in a terrible situation now. And here comes the next push from Yoda. Yoda methodically taking out the player before him who was Hasuops, guys. Don't forget, Hasuops is an excellent, excellent Protoss player. He made mincemeat of him. And uh, he, he might just make uh, raw Zerg barbecue out of uh, Biggs here. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. This Needle is trying to find an opening over the chasm. But uh, there is no vulnerability in this Terran bush quite yet. Uh, Biggs has got to be careful here. If he loses these Mutas in one big mistake, then he will lose the game. The, the reason being here, if he can keep the Mutas alive, what he wants to do here, roll the Banelings in, force the Marines to run away, and then fly in and swoop down with the Mutalisks and take out the Siege Tanks. Then he can pull back. He doesn't have to worry nearly as much, as much about Marines because Banelings come so quickly, he can deal with the Marines very easily. But he's got to keep the Mutas alive. That's absolutely essential to kill off the tanks. Uh, and let's take a look back at uh, Yoda's production here. Wow. Engineering Bay plus uh, 2 plus 2 on the way. Plenty. Look at that. It's, it's like a team. It's like a team. Mo a Model 4T factory here, or Model T Ford, whatever you want to call it. Back in the old days, we have an assembly line of Marines and Mech coming out from uh, Yoda. So things are looking splendid over there. And those Metalists, once again, trying to find a chink in the armor that is not available. And uh, the tanks are going to go ahead and siege up in the middle of Daybreak. Here, Metalists getting clamped down. And that is not a good situation for those fragile air flyers. And they are going to fly over the eye pistol billboard. And I don't know where they're going to go. They're just going to be herded over to the top left-hand corner. So uh, good job by Yoda to keep his, uh, excuse me, by QIM to keep his Metalists alive. But two reinforcing Metalists messed up Rally Point flying over Marines. And that is not... What Biggs wants to do right now, losing one or two meters here and there, it's, it's not cheap, and so not good at all. And we'll just have to wait and see if our Zerg player, if uh, if he can get something going here, if Biggs can get some kind of a surround on this Marine tank army from the top and the and the bottom. This is a map where you can get a flank. If you look here, there is multiple attack pads: one on the top, one in the middle, but he hasn't destroyed the rocks yet, and one on the south. If he can get some kind of massive flank, then he might have a chance. Now, these two Burrow Banelings could actually work some magic as well. I don't know why Biggs is flying in. He's got to bait the Marines over the Burrow Banelings. Oh, my God. Two Burrow Banelings, if they detonate correctly, can destroy an absolute party of Marines. And I think that is what he is trying to do right now. The Comsat goes off in the wrong location. Oh, my God. This could be the moment that our Zerg player Biggs is waiting for. Can he get the lucky strike? Photon torpedoes away or not? Oh, no. The Marines just not clumping up on those Banelings. And so uh, Yoda not really falling for the bait. Or maybe he's, he's not aware of it, of course. But he's not falling for the bait either. And you know what? I, I think things are just not going very well at all for our Zerg player Biggs. Uh, Biggs has just got to cross his fingers here and hope by some magical chance that those Marines all clump up on those two Banelings if he wants a shot at taking out this Terran army. Otherwise, I just don't know how this is going to play out. Those two Banelings are just waiting right there to detonate. Will it happen or not? Uh, it doesn't really look like Yoda wants to make his move quite yet. He's just chilling for now. He's going to kill off a couple of drones and he's just trying to pop up quick tumors right now and um, of course just using those Marines at the front to poke at the area of the creep and of course try to bait the zerg army in and here comes some marines but they're not on top of those two broad banelings also clump of mutas to the south here so we can see the zerg player bigs trying to set up that massive flank from the left and the right side but it's just purely mutalisks here so uh, maybe he's going to try to pick off the reinforcements that would not be a bad idea at all and we can see him doing just that, flying into a couple of Marines, not a good idea, and taking some damage as we see two more Orbital Commands coming up. And, you know, a lot of Terran players from Korea will do this. They will just switch over to Mass Orbital Command uh, and d dispose of their SCVs so they get more supply at the late, late game. So uh, we'll have to see if that's what uh, what Yoda is doing. I would imagine so, because he's going to have so many meals, he doesn't really need SCVs anymore. And he can get a lot more supply, but... Anyways, getting back to this game, I gotta say that the delay tactics here by the Zerg player may have actually saved his hide. Unbelievably so. I think 
what he's done here is bought enough time to get up to Hive Tech. And he's got Greater Spire on the way, plus three, plus three as well. If he can just hold on and get Brood Lords or Ultras or some more investors out, he might have a chance at breaking this thick Terran contain. But, um... Certainly odds are stacked up against him now. He's trying to erect five spine crawlers and morph them at the bottom right hand corner just to delay the marine pressure. Um, and we see some marines here, or some zerglings here and banelings here coming over to the bottom right hand corner. The contact goes down, revealing the burrow banelings. Unable to get that lucky strike is uh, Biggs. And uh, now a second combat goes down, so it looks like Yoda really confident here in his ability to run those Marines in, but now the Spine Crawlers are up, and there's really no way for him to penetrate that unless he brings his entire army down and sieges out those Spine Crawlers. Um, nevertheless, though, it looks like he's really being headstrong and trying to send those Marines in there, which I don't think is a good idea at all, but uh, he's going in. Um, that entire Marine party is going to die, but here comes the reinforcements, a couple more Marines, and a Thor coming in. Does Yoda have enough to break the Spine Crawlers or not? It looks like he will have enough to break the Spine Crawlers, but the reinforcements coming from the back of the third, and the Zerg player now going to surround and destroy that Terran army, and that was not good. Oh, he's burrowing the Bailings as well. He might try to bait those Marines onto the Burr Bailings, but a Comsat goes down at the same time, and that reveals the Burr Bailings, so it doesn't look like Yoda is going to fall for that trap whatsoever. Very close play here from these two players. In fact, you know, that was super, super close. But now here comes some Broodlords morphing out for Biggs. Biggs is losing his Broodlords, so he's got to unmorph the Broodlords that are hatching next to those Marines, and he does just that. This is such a close game. I cannot believe how Biggs has been able to bring it back. And really, I think that was in part, partly, I believe, oh, partly, I believe, because... Uh, Yoda just took so long to make an attack happen. I think he allowed the Zerg player to tech up to Hive, and he allowed him to get a big, big army, and now it looks like Biggs is going to try to surround a couple of Thors as they were pulling back. He was unable to do just that. But what a game we have on our hands right now as uh, our Terran player is trying to kill off the rock so we can open up more of a access point for his reinforcements. The Terran also grabbing the fourth at the top left-hand corner. A couple of Broodlings coming down now as the Broodlords have hatched out. And this is getting down to the nitty gritty. A comsat finally reveals the Burrowed Bailings that have actually been there this entire game. And, uh, you know, Yoda might not realize that. He's probably thinking, oh, those are new Burrowed Bailings. But no, those two guys have been there the entire game. They just never got the opportunity at life that they deserve to get, which is uh, Kamikaze themselves. If you call that an opportunity against the Terran army. Uh, and here comes a medevac down at the bottom right hand corner. Loaded with eight Marines, it's going to try to circumvent the Spine Crawlers, which are not there anymore. And uh, Marines coming around the backside here, going to try to kill off a Queen at the same time. Another drop in the top left-hand corner. Three Medivacs full. A whole army of Spine Crawlers coming up to the top left here, trying to throw down to deal with, deal with that. And meanwhile, it looks like uh, Yoda doing some good damage down in the bottom right, but the Medivac goes down. There's no way for those Marines to run away now. And the Baneleys just crash right on through. But what about this drop over at the top right-hand corner? It's actually doing a sizable amount of damage. Has killed off quite a few crawlers and circling reinforcements, and now the infestors trying to run away after they spit their infested Terran load. And now, can a Yoda kill off this Greater Spire before the infested Terrans get over there? Mm, the infested sp the uh, spy Greater Spire is going down, but it gets a transfuse at the last second, and maybe not at the last second entirely, but. Uh, at the very least, it looks like Biggs keeps his Greater Spire alive, which is a big, big save for obvious reasons. You don't want to uh, lose the ability to make Broodlords. And holy good lord, talking about Broodlords, look at how many uh, Biggs has got. He's got 4, 8, 13 Broodlords total. I really hope that our Terran player has Vikings. Yes, he's got 12 Vikings So and Ghosts, so he's got a sizable army. And he's building nukes? Oh, ho, ho. Wow, this game is going to get a little bit insane here, guys. And recall in the last game that Yoda actually wanted to try to use nukes against uh, Hoswabs. It just never came to fruition. So we'll have to see how this goes. Now, all of his ghosts have cloaked up. He's going for a round of sniper fire, and there's only one overseer there. He gets a fungal off, but whiffs the ghosts. Um, and the ghosts are continuing to push forward and snipe out the Broodlords. More Broodlords are coming to replace their fallen brothers. But this is a very interesting dynamic here because there's not enough detection. So we really need more Overseers and maybe a conservative use, or not conservative, but aggressive use of Fungal Growth to reveal the Cloaked Ghosts. Now all the Ghosts have decloaked to conserve energy. 
a massive Viking army coming in. Double nukes coming down. Oh my god, there's one nuke to the bottom right hand corner and one nuke over here. This could be a massive nuke and the Zerg player not realizing it. Finally, he sees the little red dot and he pulls everything away from the impending nuclear blast and he pulls away at the last second but unable to save his drones in the bottom right hand corner. I love how Yoda timed that out. He hid the second nuke by shooting both at the same time. And what Zerg player is going to think that the second nuke is falling somewhere else? That was beautiful. Now he hits all the fungos, big stuff on the ghost. But there's so many medevacs up in the air that it's keeping the ghosts and marines alive. And the broodlords are all getting sniped to itty bitty pieces. But I think that our Zerg player bigs may have enough broodlords to kill this army off. Yes, he will. Oh my god. This is such a close game, and now without Marine support, the tanks that have to unseach and fall back. He's got to pull them out right now before the Zerglings prevent the tanks from running away. Now with the Terran player, Yoda loses all of his tanks. He's not going to have any backbone at all to fall back to, but here comes the Ghost trying to supplement the mech army, and that is going to be enough Ghosts. Good lord, how did he make so many Ghosts that fast? Uh, 12 Ghosts total. How many barracks with tech labs does he have? Oh, ho, ho, little ghost mini factory at the natural, I see. So, um, and he has switched over to entirely orbitals as well. What a beautiful game plan here from Yoda, essentially switching over to mass uh, orbital command and mass ghost to use replenishing energy, recyclable energy as his main attack. Uh, and not using, um, you know, real units, so it's very cheap for him to launch attacks, and it doesn't cost anything to lose units, and he just nuked another expansion. He still has cloaked ghosts underneath this Zerg army. This is such a brilliant maneuver from Yoda, who is looking to put his team, Quantic IM, up two over over Mouse Sports, and really swinging that momentum back in favor of the Korean side, and taking it away from Europe. And wow, what a beautiful, beautiful game plan from our Terran player. I'll just reiterate one more time, guys. He's using almost entirely energy-based units, mules, uh, and ghosts, rather than real uh, expensive units. So he's able to bank a lot of his resources. And anytime you can trade energy for real units, in this case, energy for Zerg units, it's always a, a successful maneuver. And now he knows that he's got the game in hand. He forces Biggs to GG. The mule comes down as well, which is always a sign of either I lose or I win. And so uh, Yoda takes the second game convincingly. What a beautiful game plan. And some great nuclear launches as well. Let's look at the workers kill time. 68 workers kill. 68 he lost more workers than he had alive at towards the end of the game so what a great game and uh, congratulations to yoda who's going to take this series 2-0 up to game three and i hope you guys stay tuned this is hd signing up